everyone! Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to let you all know that I've changed up my description box just a little bit. For the longest time, I would put individual links to every single little stinking thing in my description box, and it looked really messy and sloppy, to be totally honest. So what I decided to finally do was get a link tree link, which is that one link that you click on and it'll like really nicely pull up all of my social media pages and everything like that. So now it's easier for you guys to find all of my social media accounts that I work with, that I associate with, like that I use, anything like that. Everything will be easily available in a nice little organized list, which I obviously very much enjoy. So if you wanna go ahead and check out that link, it is in the description box. It'll get you to all of my social media. So you can follow me, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, like wherever I have a link for it, if I have an account for it. So love you guys. I'll chat with you guys on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, and let's get into the video. everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Blair or the Illuminati and today we're going to be covering the final MLM for multi-level Mondays for 2020. And I figured a good way to close out the year was to talk about a gigantic healthcare MLM supplement shenanigans company that many, many, many of you have requested I cover, USANA Health Services. So let's get right into it. Before I can get into why USANA is a special kind of horrible, and believe me, we will get there, I have to talk about their history as a company. According to their website, USANA develops and manufactures high quality nutritional supplements, healthy foods, and personal care products that are sold directly to associates and preferred customers throughout the United States, Canada, blah, 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 whole list of countries. They also claim to focus our research and development efforts on developing and bringing to market high quality science-based products that promote long-term health and reduce the risk of chronic degenerative disease. Our research and development activities include developing products that are new to USANA and new to the industry, updating existing USANA brand formulas to keep them current with the latest science and adapting existing formulas to meet ever-changing regulations in new and existing international markets. Our scientific staff includes experts on human nutrition, cellular biology, biochemistry, genetics, the microbiome, natural product chemistry, and clinical research. These experts continually review the latest published research on nutrition, attend scientific conferences, and work with a number of third-party research institutions and researchers to identify possible new products and opportunities and reformulate our existing products. And the thing is, I can absolutely understand why people would believe them. Not just because this whole thing I read you may sound convincing, but because their founder, Myron W. Wentz, actually has some credibility. After losing his father to heart disease at a young age, Myron got his PhD in microbiology and immunology at the University of Utah. In the mid 70s, he founded Goal Laboratories, a virus diagnostics company that he sold in the mid 90s for $22 million. Myron had money, success, but he spun off USANA from Goal Laboratories in 1992. I would love to say that it became out of his control and some businessmen took it over and turned it into an MLM, but that's not the case here. Myron Wentz, as of this 2014 Forbes article, owns 51% of USANA stock. And it's such a fucking shame because Wentz himself doesn't seem like a horrible person and far from it actually, as Forbes puts it. Outside of his entrepreneurial efforts, Wentz is also preoccupied with improving the health of people in developing nations. In 2005, he opened a medical center in Uganda that's aimed at preventing diseases like HIV, malaria, and intestinal viruses. Four years later, he opened a similar medical center in Cambodia and another in Malawi in 2011. Good people can still do horrible things and horrible people can do good things. I don't know Wentz well enough to know which category he falls under. If this is the case of USANA simply being one gigantic mistake he's blind to or what? That said though, I do question a lot of decisions he's made as he's also founded the San Aviv Medical Institute, which is an innovative health and wellness center in Baja, California. 
Though they look like a beautiful place and I'd love a good day spa day there, they go on and on and on about detoxifying someone's environment. They say their pools are chlorine free, their diet is organic, they have a reverse osmosis water treatment facility and their furnitures, carpets and other soft furnishings are all made from natural fibers whenever possible. And to be clear, I'm not against this, but it's their reasons and wording that are just a bit odd. They even admit on their page that your body detoxes for you, that that's what your liver is for, and yet they offer detoxifying treatments. It just, it doesn't sound very scientific to me. I know I've mentioned it before from time to time, but plenty of research shows that a lot of the detoxifying procedures these glorified spas offer don't actually do anything. Here's what one article from Harvard Health says. The human body can defend itself very well against most environmental insults and the effects of occasional indulgence, see the body's own detox system. If you're generally healthy, concentrate on giving your body what it needs to maintain its robust self-cleaning system. A healthful diet, adequate fluid intake, regular exercise, sufficient sleep, and all recommended medical checkups. If you experience fatigue, pallor, unexplained weight gain or loss, changes in bowel function, or breathing difficulties that persist for days or weeks, visit your doctor instead of a detox spa. The point is, the more I look into Wentz, the more disheartened I become in him and his credibility. But we're not here to just talk about him. We're also, and obviously, going to take a look at his company and the products. USANA's website, which is weirdly irritating to navigate by the way, features a variety of products from their supplements to skincare to random merchandise like water bottles and totes with the brand name on it. For now, let's start with Bio Omega Supplements. Omega Supplements have a variety of results. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but if you wanna take them, that's your call. USANA charges $25 for 56 capsules, which is definitely on the pricier side of things. They're charging around 50 cents a capsule, whereas Nature Made charges eight cents a capsule. Their vitamin D is $21 for 84 capsules, whereas other companies with 90 capsules charge $11. My point here isn't to say, oh, USANA is stupidly overpriced, don't buy from them, because then I'd be constantly going after designer brands for high prices. If you love a brand because of their aesthetic, their message, their values, whatever it is, you know, spend a little extra if that's your gig. But my issue with USANA's price hiking doesn't come from their brand name. It stems from them being an MLM. Now, in case you weren't aware, MLMs are usually so overpriced because they need to be in order to give those pennies to their downline for those commissions. As one source says, the truth is that products are overpriced through multi-level marketing companies because they have to pay commissions to distributors on many levels. That's the whole point of multi-level marketing. Many levels of distributors get a piece of the action when you buy something. That sounds pretty innocent, doesn't it? Well, sure, those putting in the work to sell the products should get paid, except in almost every MLM, the upline, not the distributor who sells the product, gets more commission than the person who sold. Even still, almost no one makes any money in an MLM. It's an ugly cycle where money gets funneled away from the person who sold the product, but almost everyone still fails to turn a profit. And let's not even talk about how the products are next to impossible to sell on a consistent basis anyway. So lots of distributors end up buying the products themselves just to meet quotas. To illustrate this, see USANA Watchdog's article about the pricing of products. Research and formulations would be categorized under research and development and represents a measly 0.7% of the price of the product. Raw materials, costs associated with batch size, manufacturing, packaging, and transportation would be categorized under cost of sales and represents 18.5% of the price of the product. Commissions are categorized as associate incentives, which also includes bonuses and certain awards and prizes represents 43.2% of the price of the product. The biggest reason why the products are overpriced. It is also worth mentioning that two thirds of all USANA associates have never collected a single commission. Most of the commission is paid to the top 1% of associates. Last but not least, 99% of USANA associates do not make a profit. This category is the heart of the pyramid scheme. 
Make no mistake, MLM products aren't high priced for any good reason. They are high priced because they must be in order to support the pyramid. And 99% of the people in the pyramid will never profit from the so-called business opportunity. I know most of you have been on this channel for some time and are probably really aware of this, but for those of you that aren't, this is why their mediocre shower gel is $16 when no, it doesn't actually have gold dust in there or other body washes or shower gels that are like, you know, for eight bucks. John Cloud from Time Magazine did an in-depth article about it and tried USANA himself. After taking USANA for months, here's what he said. When I visited USANA's Salt Lake City headquarters in July, it was a former Pauling student, a molecular biologist named Brian Dixon, who met with me to review my lab results. Dixon and I reviewed copies of my two lab reports, including the baseline results from January and the post-regimen results from June. Each report showed 31 measurements, the first of which was glucose serum, a measure of my blood sugar. 83 milligrams per deciliter in January and 88 milligrams per deciliter in June, a change neither statistically nor medically significant. In fact, even after more than 3000 pills and a daily diet of fiber powders and protein bars, little had changed. Two measures of my kidney health, values for blood urea, nitrogen, and creatine were identical. Calcium, protein, sodium, none had varied much. I asked two doctors to review my lab results. Bronstein at Cedars Sinai and Stefan Dillon, my personal physician of 15 years. Both said only two of the values on my blood report had changed significantly. First, there was that 75% vitamin D increase, which the two of them attributed to the vitamin D3 supplement I had been taking rather than to my spending more time outside. Second, my level of high density lipoprotein, cholesterol, the good one, had leaped from 61 milligrams per deciliter in January to 89 milligrams per deciliter in June, an increase of 46%. Bronstein said he couldn't explain such a big surge. He pointed out that supplements may include niacin can amplify HDL cholesterol, but he suspected that my niacin dose of 40 milligrams per day was too low to account for such a large increase. Dylan speculated that the 2000 milligrams of fish oil concentrate I had been taking may have played a role. And again, this is only one man's results. So of course, if you feel like supplements help you and your doctor is all for it, then by all means, I am no medical professional to tell you how to live your life. My only point is that while the fish oil concentrate may have helped him, it doesn't seem like USANA specifically is like, you know, their fish oil to take or anything. Moving forward though, let's get into the real dirt and the legal things USANA has faced because I'm very excited to get into this next bit with a man named Barry Minkow. Now, interestingly enough, Barry Minkow is actually a con artist himself. He, according to Fortune, was the boy wonder business phenom of the 1980s. In 1982, at age 16, he started ZZZZ Best, a carpet cleaning company from his parents' garage in Reseda, California in the San Fernando Valley. The business expanded rapidly and went public in 1986, making Minkow at age 20 worth more than $100 million on paper but it was a giant Ponzi scheme and collapsed in May, 1987. Minkow was convicted of 57 federal felonies, sentenced to 25 years and ordered to pay $26 million in restitution. So who better to know a con than a con man? By no means whatsoever do I want to make Minkow out to be this great guy who turned over a new leaf and hasn't made any mistakes since. That is absolutely not the case here. But I find this weird battle between him and USANA pretty interesting. Before I get there though, let me explain where this began. According to the San Diego Union Tribune, he became a born again fraudster buster when he got out of jail and began preaching. Minkow's sermons matched the fundamentalist leanings of his congregation. In a nod to his criminal past, his first sermon centered on fraud. But he wasn't talking about stock market fraud. Instead, he focused on Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Scientific evidence has revealed that evolution is not scientific and is not factual, and yet is being taught as if it is, he said. That is fraudulent. 
Whether by happenstance or design, Mankow's position as a minister dovetailed nicely with another job that he created for himself, scam buster at the Fraud Discovery Institute, an investigative outfit he founded in the church's offices using church employees as staffers. At first, most of Minkow's targets were tiny penny stock firms that often have shoddier financial records and attract less regulatory scrutiny than the larger companies on the market. When he found something questionable, Minkow would pass it along to the Federal Bureau of Investigation or the Securities and Exchange Commission, while almost simultaneously posting a report on the internet with a note that regulators had already been alerted. Although the targeted companies were often minuscule, they gave Minkow the chance to build a reputation as a fraud buster. Such major media outlets as the Wall Street Journal and the Bloomberg Newswire began reporting his allegations and he became a repeated guest on Neil Cavuto's business shows on Fox News. But the biggest coup arguably came in 2005 when 60 Minutes ran a report portraying Minkow as a reformed crime buster. There's even been a movie about this guy to watch, which at some point I honestly might watch this because it it is pretty interesting. After all though, this is in 2006, so I'll give you one guess as to the company he went after next. Yeah, it was USANA. But see, Minkow didn't just accuse this company of being a pyramid scheme and stop there. Oh, no, 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 no. He and his Fraud Discovery Institute delivered a 500 page report on USANA. 500 pages, five. Zero, zero. Now, I can't actually show you guys the report because of all the legal things surrounding it. It basically doesn't exist on the internet. And believe me, I tried really hard. Allie and me, we tried very fucking hard to find it. It can't be found. Thankfully, it has been quoted from time to time between sources. As Desert News says, a Utah multi-level marketing company has settled a dispute with a critic who agreed to stop disparaging nutritional supplement maker USANA Health Services Incorporated. Self-proclaimed fraud buster Barry Minkow said he took a critical report off his website. He shut down another website devoted to USANA's dealings in China, and he pulled interviews with failed USANA distributors from YouTube. Other terms weren't disclosed, but USANA said Monday it was happy with the settlement. USANA said it will withdraw its lawsuit against Minkow and his San Diego-based Fraud Discovery Institute from US District Court in Salt Lake City. USANA sued Minkow for defamation and stock manipulation, but most of those claims were thrown out March 3rd by US District Judge Tina Campbell. Separately from the settlement, the company paid $142,510 in attorney's fees to Minkow and his institute under an order from federal magistrate Samuel Alba. Minkow came out with his first critical report of USANA in February, 2007, when he bought put operations in the stock in a legal bet that the price would fall. USANA had accused him of market manipulation, which he denied. He agreed to never trade in USANA stock again. And this really reminds me of the Ackman battle with Herbalife, how he tried to get an MLM to crash, like good effort, man, but you know, it didn't pay off. Minkow had criticized USANA for its network marketing business model, once soaring share price and series of flaps involving the credentials of top executives and sales associates. See, what Minkow criticized though, wasn't just that USANA was and is a pyramid scheme. He also made a lot of theories suggesting that their profits could be irresponsibly siphoned and things of that nature. So unlike some longer researched articles like what we saw from John Ateen in The Body Shop, this 500 page report had some speculation in it in which if I can speculate for myself for a second here was probably why it was taken down. I don't advocate for that kind of reporting on serious issues and I do try myself to be quite unbiased and only inserting my own theories from time to time and making it very clear that I'm saying, this is my theory, this is my opinion, yada, yada, yada. But if I had been him and were sending a report to the FBI, then yeah, a hypothesis probably didn't belong in there. A pattern has emerged with Minkow. He barrages accusations against a company, then makes a quick profit from shorting the stocks. The company denies or downplays the charges and they settle out of court privately and you know then he makes a stupid amount of money. After all, Herbalife and Newskin, two MLMs he's already gone after, have their own issues. So is Minkow a good guy? No, he's got to give his accusations more foundation. But this whole battle between him and USANA, is it still worth mentioning? Kind of. Well, 
I thought so anyway. He's not entirely wrong either, even if he does kind of mix the truth with fact. So for example, Minkow charges that USANA's senior management and directors exercised $95 million in stock options, even as the company authorized 140 million in stock repurchases. None of that is illegal, Minkow said, but where did they get that $140 million from? From the people that they lied and told they were going to succeed in this multi-level marketing business? That's wrong, that's evil. Minkow alleges that 85% of current USANA distributors are losing money and 74% of distributors fail within the first year. These distributors account for 86% of the company's multi-level marketing revenue, Minkow said. In today's internet economy, there is simply no need for multi-level marketing or the overpriced products that they sell, meaning that the only thing they are selling are memberships in anticipation of future memberships will be sold in the future, which is the classic definition of a pyramid scheme. USANA says that nearly 80,000 people have signed up to be so-called preferred customers and do not participate as business associates. And if there's anything I really agree with, it's that last sentence. These direct sellers aren't just salespeople, they're preferred customers. Hanbots keep MLMs in business. But moving on from what Minkow said, let's go to a different lawsuit. In 2007, a class action lawsuit was filed against USANA, alleging that their common stock had artificially inflated prices. In 2008, Reuters explained that although the SEC probe ended, lawsuits were still an issue for the company. According to USANA, in December, 2008, an arbitrator in the state of Utah awarded a former USANA distributor approximately $7 million in compensatory damages for wrongful termination. This top level distributor was terminated in 2003 for a material breach of their distributor agreement and for violating USANA's policies and procedures. USANA is disappointed with the arbitrator's ruling and believes that neither did the decision rendered nor the amount awarded is supported by the facts of the case. USANA plans to pursue all available legal remedies to set aside and vacate the award. However, no assurance can be given that USANA will be successful in vacating the award. USANA believes that distributor compliance is critical to the integrity of its business and is aggressive in enforcing its agreements with distributors. As a result, USANA periodically becomes involved in distributor compliance actions and considers these actions routine and incidental to its business. The arbitration described above is no exception and is the first ruling against USANA in a distributor compliance action. USANA will continue to be aggressive in enforcing its agreements with distributors. And the thing in this case was the judgment was against USANA, meaning that they had to pay that former employee. So why the hell do they act like they're the victim? And (laughs) I don't know why I still like am surprised by this, but. A lot of MLMs act like this with this language of like, oh, we're disappointed in the ruling as opposed to like, I don't know, apologizing and saying they'll change or do better or whatever. According to the Salt Lake Tribune, this entire lawsuit was all because of that same issue we saw with the body shop. USANA terminated a couple because they were in another MLM. Chris and Elizabeth Kuchera through their company, Praise Enterprises Limited, began as USANA distributors in 1995. Under multi-level marketing plans, participants get commissions from those they recruit as distributors and for others who are subsequently brought into the fold. By 2003, the Kucheras had brought their downline to a point where they had 5,000 members under them, were earning 600,000 annually in commissions and bonuses, and were generating about $20 million a year in sales for USANA. But in 2003, the couple's contract was canceled. USANA claimed that though the couple was highly successful with USANA, they decided to hedge their bets and signed on with competing multi-level marketer Isagenics International with headquarters in Chandler, Arizona. The Kucheras also recruited some of their USANA distributors to the other company in violation of their contract, USANA claimed. The couple sued over dismissal and third district judge Anthony Quinn ruled that the parties had to settle the dispute with an arbitrator through the American Arbitration Association. The two sides agreed on Tomless Chandler, a commercial attorney in Boise. In a decision released in December, Chandler had ruled that while the Kucheras may have technically violated their contract, their involvement with Isagenics was so minor that it did not warrant dismissal from USANA. 
According to the decision, the Kucheras ordered products from Isogenix to help an overweight son and daughter suffering the effects of having lived in a house with mold. Because of the success in using Isogenix products, the daughter signed up with that company and then enrolled her parents, her fiance, and the fiance's mother to receive the products. Under Canadian law, the products were only for personal use and could not be resold. Chandler ruled that the Kucheras were not building a competing business and that USANA did not suffer any damage as a result of their actions. And so here's the thing, like, do I feel sympathy for either side? Not in particular. The Kucheras were some serious hunbots building up a downline and making over half a million dollars a year. But by the same token, USANA just seemed like a jealous boss that got upset that they were buying from a different MLM when the Kucheras were only buying Isogenix for their daughter's personal use. But believe it or not, we're still not done with their legal problems. One article reads that in 2019, Chinese authorities suspended the registration and approval of direct selling amid a nationwide crackdown on wrongdoing in the health products market. The Ministry of Commerce will establish a blacklist of untrustworthy direct selling companies and participants, ministry spokesperson Gao Feng said Thursday at a routine press conference. The move came after probes and crackdowns on several large scale health products direct selling groups following customer complaints of exaggerated advertisements and questionable products that could even hurt people's health. Local authorities in Guangzhou, Guangdong Providence are investigating LKK Health Products Group, one of the country's biggest direct selling companies with Infinitus at its core brand, following allegations that its products damaged a toddler's heart. So why would this affect USANA? Well, because their subsidiary, Baby Care Limited, is sold in China. Some sources even claim that the potential for fraud is most present in the subsidiary because over half of USANA's total sales are derived from baby care, which was acquired in 2010 for $62 million. Up until USANA acquired them, they had a traditional retail sales model, but the structure and business model of baby care in China is different and murky, far more in line with an MLM that has not been formally approved by the Chinese government. Now, there's not enough to say they are definitely fraudulent, but it sure as hell seems that way. And I've got to question if they could be bribing officials in China to get away with their MLM pyramid scheme structure like we saw happen with Herbalife. So just to recap, we've got incredibly high priced vitamins and supplements, accusations hurled at them from all directions. And in 2007, around the Barry Minkow time, they even supposedly had questions about the education and credibility of their own higher ups in the company. Mediocre supplements sold by a mediocre company that doesn't care about its huns and has a really shady subsidiary beneath it. And yeah, I think that might cover most of it, but I'm sure some Huns in the comments or whatever might be mad at me for not mentioning how they've sponsored some athlete competitions, you know, and ace out the hunger fund. But let's be real here. With a company this huge, that money is just a drop in the bucket made to make them look good. If it's not a consistent pattern of charity, then these kinds of charitable actions mean pretty little to me. But before we conclude, I've got one more thing we need to address. The question we always try to answer in any MLM topic, can you make money selling this shit? Well, I headed over to the finance guy, a source I've often used for this as he calculates all the fun stuff with income disclosures and whatnot and makes a really nice and clear and easy to understand breakdown. Here's what he said. You can earn a profit if you buy USANA products at the associate preferred price and sell them at retail price. Based on the prices in Australia, we estimate that this is a profit margin of approximately 12%. We only looked at the Essentials Health Pack. Margins on other products may vary. This is described as the surest method of earning immediate income, yet only this small paragraph is dedicated to retail sales. This raised some red flags in my mind. If retail sales is the surest way to earn, then why have I never seen USANA products offered for retail sale? Why did my friend and his sponsor try to recruit me rather than sell me some products? Why is it called preferred price instead of a wholesale price? The sponsor explained that I have never seen the products for sale before because this is not how the multi-level marketing model works. Rather than spend money on traditional marketing and distributors, they sell directly through their network of associates. Allegedly, this reduces the cost and enables USANA to produce superior quality supplements. 
The story sounded illogical. Selling product out in small quantities to millions of individuals can't be cheaper than selling bulk orders to retail outlets. Furthermore, if USANA is going to pay royalties to my friend for everyone he recruits, then there must be some middle level markup to build into their preferred prices. To find answers, I decided to read through the 2014 USANA annual report. And needless to say, what was found doesn't look very good. In order to maximize a business center, if you're even able to get that far, a USANA network has to sell over $11,000 worth of product in a week. Here's what he also adds. I'm assuming that very few USANA associates ever managed to maximize a business center and USANA has confirmed this. In their description of the binary compensation plan, USANA warns that less than 1% of full-time associates maximized a business center during the year. This has been worded cleverly. We looked at the USANA income disclosure statement and calculated that only 0.9% of all USANA associates are classified as full-time. If less than 1% of these associates maximized a business center, then this would mean less than 0.009% or one in 11,000 of all USANA associates maximized a business center. I was able to find their income disclosure statements as well, which were absolutely fucking confusing to interpret. But thankfully I saw a more comprehensive grid from a different source that explains how over 75% of their company make less than $250 a year. About 90% make less than a thousand and about 5% have a living wage. So in other words, no living wage here. And it's barely even enough to qualify as a side gig for the vast, vast majority of people. I think I can officially say with confidence that there is nothing redeemable or worthwhile about this company. I mean, hell, they've even partnered with the Dr. Oz show if you need any more reason to dislike them. So with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe. If you want to see more from me, including all the sources I used to create today's video, make sure to check out the links in the description box down below. I will have all the sources in a pastebin file, all of my social media, if you wanna connect with me outside of here, yada, 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 you guys know the drill. So thank you guys so much for making it to another video. I love you all. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you in the next one. Bye guys.